I was seven years old and I had a lawn care business. Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's episode of the Jeff Heilman Project. This is episode 50. If you're watching today, we have a few firsts for this season. First for, of this season is, as you can see, we have sunglasses on the table. So that means that the rain has stopped and the sun is shining. Daylight savings time. It's, it's like straight out of a Beach Boys song or something. In my room. <laughs> Where it is, the sun is shining, room. and we are having a California kind of dreaming kind of day. That was day. my favorite song growing up. Uh, California, who sung California Dreaming? That's not Beatles. Uh, Moms and Papas. California, is it Moms and Papas? Are gone, yeah. And the sky is gray. And the sky is gray. Okay, we digress. And then, so the second of the, so this is the first real sunny day in a long time and so that is a first yeah, it's, the uh, second what's the, the temperature is 65 degrees at the warmest part of the day which the last couple of weeks it's been creeping up to, to about mean, 60 but this is nice madeline today was just saying can it please not rain on my day off please so i don't can rain. go somewhere yeah. the second exactly. first is it's our anniversary that's 27 right. years 28. ago, 28 years ago today. It's not our wedding anniversary. It no, is our. It's our what's up anniversary. It's our, what do they call it? Our meet cute anniversary. Meet cute. It is our meet cute <laughs> anniversary where for the very first time, Jeff Heilman and Jessica Heilman yep. looked upon each other and said, hmm, I'd like some more information about that. I'd like uh, a little better look at the menu. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Add that emoji with the finger. Hmm. Mm. So, uh, so in honor. What so, is the soup to do? Yes, our first anniversary. So, in honor of our very first meet cute, and in the business, that's what they call the first uh, when a, in a rom com. Rom -com when um, yeah. you know, uh, as he explains it in the holiday, the he holiday. explains it perfectly. Mm -hmm. He says a couple gets together over the pajama table. And she grabs the top and he grabs the bottom and they look over at each other and they there's lock your, eyes. There's your meat there's cute. Your meet cute. Yes. Top and bottom come together and the couple meets for the first time. So and in honor of our meet cute, after we get over our pleasantries, after we go through our pleasantries and seeing how we were and how the week went, we're going to talk about our first some of our first experiences, including our first jobs. This was a topic selection selection uh, that Andrew wanted to bring up. You mean when I went from unemployed to employed? Yeah, after yeah. Meeting and you? Andrew sent us a list. <laughs> Andrew, our producer, and soon to be eighteen year old. Uh, we are going to have that's a first. We're going to have four, four kids, adult children, four kids over the age of eighteen here in, in our August. family. And yeah. um, he has, as the as the basic as the producer wow. of our show, he sent us in some topics, and this okay. is one of the topics. But before we get started with our first jobs, Mr. Heilman, how was your week? Good. I haven't seen you much. I've gotten Good. very little sleep myself. So yeah. I've been heads down on a deal, and you've been heads down working on the house, working on your grandparents' house, getting mm -hmm. that ready for sale, and. Uh, staged and cleaned and painted and slept All there the a couple of nights to try to just spend I a little bit of time. Night. I mean, it was pretty cool to be able Childhood to. Childhood home. I, I was, it, it was going to be an all-nighter anyway, and I was in the house, and I was just thinking, you know, when was the, to be able to really say, like, this was the night that was the last night that I got to spend in my childhood home. And it wasn't just me leaving the home. I mean, the home, it's like, it's, it would be, when was the last, when, it would be like giving you the opportunity to spend the night in the Hillcrest home before it was no longer your, like, the, the entire family is now moving out yeah, of that which, house. Yeah, which I did get to do that. Yeah. yeah. So this is the last, you know, this, this for, for my entire family. It was, everybody had already moved on. Since 63. I was left. Three. The house was built in 1958, and I think that they moved in, like, you, like yeah, 63. So 63, yeah. So, I mean, the entire family's vacating the property. Like, so, and I, w I got to be, you know, my grandma and grandpa got to be the first, and I got to be the last one of our family. That's and right. being able to sleep there and be able to say, like, tonight's the night that is the last 
night that our family is going to be in this family home. And we get to lovingly pass the torch on to the next buyer. And I'm excited about that because it's going to be, it's coming along really cute and it's going to be in really good condition, as best of condition as a 66 year old house can be um, when we, you know, pass it on to the next person. So, and, and the fact that it was just beautiful weather and it's like we had. Yeah, it's springtime. We There's drove peach by blossoms the on mothership the on the way because we went to, we went to Tantau to go to the, to lunch. And it's just like, oh my gosh, everybody was walking around. I'm thinking these guys are going to be able to walk from Apple headquarters to this house. And that like on a beautiful day, that, that's pretty cool. So anyways, that's what I've been up to. And you've been taking care of the kids. Thank you. Thank you for taking care of the kids for me. Andrew's been taking care of the kids. That's the truth. He's been, Thank you, Andrew. He's been doing a lot. Thank you for holding down the fort while we work on this uh, project. We went to lunch yesterday to try to give him a break. What did you have? I saw you went to Siena. A chicken Marcella. What did you have, Andrew? I think I had a, a turkey sandwich. Oh, yeah, turkey nice. club sandwich. Well, salad. Th- that turkey must have been like carved, like real turkey, not like it was, it was pretty good. Yeah, the bread would looked a little crunchy, but did it have like cranberry sauce, like a turkey sandwich sandwich? Uh, no, I don't think so. It had um, gorgonzola cheese mm. and just uh, turkey and lettuce and tomato and bacon. If you're ever in downtown Willow Glen, go see Dave at <laughs> Siena Bistro. Man, I've been living off it's of a little tough to find, but it's I've been living off of beautiful. like my diet. It has not been very good this week, but thankfully, I know that with this plan that I've been on, that it's only temporary, and I'll be back to, I'll be back to my fighting size and fighting food. You haven't gone up much. No, I, I don't think I've gone up. It's if you anything, it's bloated from you salt. Still, you intake. still eat well. Yeah, maybe water <laughs> retention from not sleeping, but yeah. your uh, uh, your meal sizes have stayed really small. Yeah, you just small. don't eat. Like we go but out this and get morning, a, I took attack, down, of, attack of the Killer Tacos at Taco Bell, and I'll eat nine of them, and you eat one. So yeah. Tonight, this morning, I took down, for example, anybody who cares, uh, I took down a uh, cheese Danish from Starbucks. Whoa! Which I usually on only eat half. Edge. Madeline and I usually split it, Jeez. and then two sausage burritos from McDonald's. Ooh, I was looking at those yesterday. Thinking, yes. Man, so I, I like my calorie count is, <laughs> but. Yeah. Needless to say. But that's the exception, not the rule. Like no, normally you eat small meal for breakfast, small meal yes. for lunch, if Oatmeal anything. Oatmeal every day. And then half of the normal dinner portion and you walk five miles a day and that's dropped you from mm-hmm, down to, <laughs> you know, your current weight, which is 40 something. No, it's 50 pounds. Yeah. It's 50, no, it's 50 pounds. Yeah. So um, after having seven kids, perfect. So the perf- this is the perfect segue, actually, because talking about like uh, oatmeal, <laughs> how's this going to transition? Talking about oatmeal it is the first meal. It was me growing up. It was the first meal of the day in my grandparents' house. I can remember um, not not the grandparents that were working on the house. My mom's parents. I can re- my grandpa worked uh, he worked in aero as an aeronautical engineer basically and he would wake up at like five o'clock in the morning and I can remember no matter what time I woke up grandpa was always up earlier yeah. and he was sitting at the table with his newspaper and he would eat the same he would have oatmeal like um, quick oats not steel cut quick he would have oh grandma would make him because grandma was up too she was one of those women yeah wake up earlier than her husband and made him breakfast i know yep. i grandma know honey. Did that too and then she went back to bed <laughs> yeah but yeah. you uh, no, it's fine you don't she, have to wake up at three in the morning she would make oatmeal the quick oat oatmeal every morning and one slice of wheat pre-buttered broiled because they broiled. would broil it in the oven yes. on a sheet Broiled, and I love, bro- I don't know what it is about broiled buttered toast because the bottom's soft and the top is crunchy. It's like <sighs> Texas toast. Yeah. So she'd have, so he'd have one piece of uh, sliced whole wheat toast with butter on it and oatmeal, so- like an oatmeal bowl with a little brown sugar. No, you were the first one that ever put butter and cream. Like I, that was the, that was foreign to me. I'd never seen anybody what do that do before. That- how does the butter get on the toast if you don't put it on? <laughs> no, on the oatmeal. Oh, on oatmeal. I'd never seen. You never seen butter and brown butter sugar. Butter and brown and sugar and milk in oatmeal before. No, because the way I grew up, they just like do the little spoon of brown sugar on the top, and that was it. 
<laughs> so having the firsts, what was your first job and how old were you? Chocolate Designers, the corner of Lawrence Expressway and Bollinger, which becomes Moore Park. I, can't pull at, uh, I think it's at Moore Park across Lawrence. It's not there anymore. I worked for these two, uh, these two sisters, and uh, I was a janitor. My job was to scrub. How did you get the job? Were you just walking by one day? and I saw a help wanted sign, and I was like, oh, I could work in a candy store. I get to eat all the candy that I want and make some money. And my first paycheck was like $52. Like, I don't remember exactly how much it was, but it was 50. It had a five in front of it, and it wasn't 100. And uh, I was like, oh, my gosh, that's like 10 weeks of allowance. <laughs> Were you 14, 15, 16? I was 14. My first day of work was the Loma Prieta earthquake. Yeah. And God has say. been trying to get me out of my job ever <laughs> since. <laughs> yeah. Tell us, let us, let us, you know, not very many, you know, babies scream. I went back into the building and had to rescue a couple say, of babies teenage scream girls. When they're born. Screaming. Your, your, your first day of work. Yeah. I'd been at work for 20 minutes. In 1989, I punched in at like tell, five o'clock. Let's tell the millennials who have no idea what the Loma Prieta the earthquake was. The Loma Prieta earthquake, earthquake was. was one of the most damaging earthquakes in one of the most populated areas in the world, and it hit in 1989 in October, like 12th or something. October 19th, I maybe could I be. believe it was October 9th. No, that's Jeffrey's birthday. October 17th, 1989. When was the Loma Prieta earthquake? I believe it was the 17th because my dog was born on that day. It was the 17th. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Saxton well, was born on Saxton was born the 17th, on the 17th. Like during the earthquake. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So October 17th, 1989, there yeah. was a that magnitude was of. Almost 15. It was, a, I think it was like an eight or it was like a high Pretty seven, big, yeah. eight earthquake. It, demo, there was a freeway that I don't know where the freeway was. I think it was up uh, where the 880 is mm -hmm. now. Uh, called the Nimitz Freeway, and you can go look at the map of where the Nimitz Freeway used to go. But and there was like ten miles of double decker freeway that collapsed yeah, during rush hour traffic, good. killing a bunch of yeah. people and just completely destroyed the freeway. Maybe it's where the Embarcadero is. I, I don't remember where the Nimitz Freeway was, but I remember I was like fourteen. And I remember that freeways collapsed. The Candlestick section of the park? a section of the Bay Bridge collapsed, and a car yeah. went. Poof, like it was, it was bad news. And it was a rolling earthquake, which is, yeah. Yeah, they have different types of earthquakes. We don't, honestly, we don't get earthquakes very often. And if we do no, get a small little, one, usually. if we get a small one, then uh, that's actually a good thing because it's releasing the pressure and it keep prevents from the big ones coming. Or, or at least that's what they told us growing up. I love how the fact, have you seen these memes on Instagram? where it's the school desk and it was, it's like wanted to invest in a bomb shelter and it's a picture of the school desk because they had this belief that if, if you, that we had drills that we would go under our desk and put our hands over the back of our neck in case of an earthquake. This is, this, this is what's going to save yeah, your that's life. That's what will save you. <laughs> these, your little desk. <laughs> these little desks from you like You can't make it to the door jam. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so... I was, yeah, so you were at the store, and oh my God, I cannot imagine being at a candy shop with all uh, those all glass, glass jars yeah. and like your entire inventory spilling all over the floor. You have to throw, fun. you can't eat, <laughs> you can't eat no, the gum can't when it's it. got glass the in it. The gum's trying to eat you. I mean, the things were falling all over the place, and there was some helium tanks that uh, had fallen, like uh, standing upright for balloons, and it had pinned this one girl against the wall and she's freaking out. So I went back in and there, there was like three or four of these had fallen and she couldn't get out. That's, that's, that's wow. what I remember. That's my, not I the first time you've saved somebody's life. That's wow. You're just, well, I don't know if I saved her life, but yeah, well, that she was felt like weird. You, you rescued, that was, I rescued somebody. You rescued I don't know who people. it was or what her name was or anything, but I remember that that was a pretty weird, just pretty weird situation. Um, my first job, I'm, I'm trying to think of Cupcake. like, Cupcakes. yeah, well, if you, you know, it's, it's hard, like as entrepreneurs growing up, we've always been working and, but like our first W2, like yeah, with my a first paycheck. Business, <laughs> my first business came way before my first job. Yeah. With a paycheck, my first job was at the Muffin Break in Muffin Los... Break. No, I'm sorry, Lake Oswego, yeah. Oregon. Yeah. It was, was like a Blue's little Ferry? coffee shop, and they had the they had these amazing. 
I mean, I don't know why we don't have more muffin shops. Like, we should have dedicated muffin shops because muffins are awesome. You can make savory. You can make sweet. But it was a it was a muffin shop, and I thought that I was applying for, like, the cafe, you know, like, being the front person and being behind the counter and selling selling muffins and selling I didn't necessarily want to be a barista because we didn't know what baristas were back then there Starbucks was barely a thing when did do you know maybe you can ask your fans Starbucks to watch was when did 70s, Starbucks but it didn't it didn't really it start didn't become like until mainstream later. but we had coffee because it was the Pacific Gloria Northwest. jeans Gloria jeans was the first like oh you can put sugar and cream in it and it doesn't taste like trash and you can buy your beans. I remember my parents would beans, go to yeah. Gloria Jeans and buy beans. But um, so so I thought I was getting a job working behind the counter, being, you know, cute, talking to customers. And I applied and they're like, I think I was probably about 15 and a half, you know, whenever you got your first workers permit. And I got there my first day. I'm super excited. And they're like, oh, no, <laughs> your job is dishwasher you know you get to be the one in the back and let me tell you washing out muffin tins because there's like you know and these are big this is like 24 and they're little cups and you have to you know you have to like clean out every little cup not what i want to do and (laughs) then what do you uh, do i wash Muffin tins. And Muffin it, so, tin because they would bake them on those big racks. So there's like, you know, th- 50 on a thing. And then, and then, so a lot of aluminum and scrubbing. And then they would uh, cake up. And then there would be like the bleach water and the regular water. So needless to say, my first job did not last for, I did not, la- I did not she last very la- long in my last. first job. <laughs> well, you didn't last. How thing. long did you last? I oh, mean, they closed the shop. Maybe and you had an earthquake. No, first day I, I was there for a few months yeah but did i didn't they, <laughs> you must have had to be there when they were like having to refill and re-inventory oh, yeah, i had and... to scrape up all the glass and throw all that perfectly good candy away <laughs> not eat it nope. <laughs> well yeah so so i didn't last very long on my first day job because it was it was very difficult and i i think that more than it being very difficult it did not meet my did not meet my expectations you know and Her self-image was too high. I don't. My, I could scrape dead candy and glass off a floor and get paid. And you didn't want to do dishes, and well, I, I, don't I, I don't blame you. I don't. I wouldn't I, want I, to I do just, that either. I, I don't. I'm like my first job. I shouldn't be sweating. <laughs> I shouldn't have to sweat through my first job. Yeah. This is hard. I. I. Man, you guys. Anybody. Anybody who's watching this that is currently a dishwasher we or a you so janitor. Much. I mean, we have. This last week, working on getting this house ready, it, uh, the painters came in, and the painter was talking about holidays. And um, would you care to tell us what a holiday is? Because I knew exactly what he was talking about. Holiday is when you roll a... Uh, <laughs> we can go down the woolly walk about. We just call well, them woolly you, First, you have to explain... <laughs> Okay, first you have to explain. Okay, they're, the they're, woolly baka. No, 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 the guy, Mitch, the, the guy, no, 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 it was the guy with the really long hair. He was the one that told you, taught you guys Andy. how to paint. Andy. Andy, yeah. Yeah, you got to tell us about Andy uh, and telling you about holidays. He smoked weed for a living and worked part time. Whenever, whenever he could fit it in. But he uh, he was a maintenance supervisor at a big apartment community up in Oregon. And we were we were cleaning vendors for him. We would go in and clean apartments. And uh, he goes, you know, I wish you guys were painters because our painters are not very reliable and you guys are really reliable. You show up on time. You do great work. You always charge, you know, fair amounts for your stuff. And I just wish you guys could paint. And we're like, we wish we could paint too, but we don't know how. And he's like, I'll tell you what. You, get, you just give me, you know, we're sitting there going – Oh, I know how I know what it was. It was basically each of you guys buy me a dime bag and I'll teach you how to paint. So he um, he said for 30 bucks a piece, I'll teach you guys how to paint. And then you can be my painting vendors. And I'll be like and we were like, "Okay." Okay. And all of a sudden we went from doing apartments which were just destroyed and getting maybe 200 bucks to spend all day cleaning an apartment, 100 bucks a piece, right? Which you do the math on that. There's 25 work days in a month. If you're making 100 bucks a month or 100 bucks a day, 
doing a destroyed apartment, you're you're losing money. You need to make two hundred a day. Yeah, because a lot of those apartments you couldn't knock out two in a day. No. I mean, they were no. Some they of would them were just everything. awful. Yeah. Um, so we went from doing that to painting three apartments at two hundred dollars a day. Yeah. So we were making like three hundred bucks. We went from making a hundred bucks, hundred hundred twenty bucks a day to because making like someone else three hundred bucks the a day cleaning because cleaning was done. Painting is pretty easy. In an empty, clean. In an empty, clean apartment that's ready to go. Um, and it, we, we would always go in last. Yeah. So we, we were clean painters, so we could go in. That was the other thing is that you have to stack your painters to go in first if they're messy so the cleaning crew can go in behind them. We could actually go in before or after. It didn't really matter. And so we started making two or 300 bucks a day from painting. So God bless Andy, wherever he is. Um, he showed us how to paint, and that – pivoted us in, in 1997, we just cleaned apartments in 1998, we, we painted. And I think at the end of the year, we probably made 30 grand a piece instead of like 26 grand. So we didn't really make that much more, but we had a better quality of life. We didn't have to work quite so many hours. We didn't have to deal with bags and bags and bags of towels and the cost of cleaning supplies, which was pretty high because we painted using, using their, using whatever paint they already had. And so a holiday (laughs) is a painter's term for when you roll a paint roller over a pretty big cobweb and then it becomes a globule that kind of drips down because the, it it holds more paint than the wall holds and then it drips. And so they call it a holiday because if you have too many of them, they send you on holiday. You're going on a holiday. You're going on a holiday. You're going on a yeah, holiday. Not, so what was what's the um what's a woolly baka? A woolly baka <laughs> <laughs> is the thicker nap. It's like the three quarter or the one inch um or the heavy texture for the heavy wall. texturized wall or the popcorn ceilings. If you're gonna do the popcorn ce- if you're gonna paint the popcorn ceilings, you need a thicker nap on those than the than the three eighths inch. And so we called them woolly bo- <laughs> woolly bacas. woolly bacas because we didn't we didn't know what else because to call them. Because as anybody who's ever followed our podcast knows, we We're have a Star tendency to name things. <laughs> no, yeah. we name we everything. We name cars. We name houses. We name everything. We name woolly bacas. Um, what 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 in your painting experience? What was the worst? Uh, I think you used to say, and uh, not not to be derogatory towards anybody. But curry, isn't it like curry that it was either smoke or I think curry is actually on par with smoke for just like not being able to come out of the paint. Yeah, a lot of times you just have to, you have to tear the drywall out. Hey everybody, this is Jessica. I'm so excited to offer to you this new service and this ability that you have to text in your questions, comments. Maybe you have some situations that you'd love for Jeff and Jessica to try to tackle along with you. You can text us now at 203-646-1472. Your phone carrier may have standard rates that apply, it being a text, but this is a free service from us to you in which we would like to participate with you in an ongoing conversation about how we can help and what we can possibly do for you. Looking forward to hearing from you soon. Did you guys ever do that? I don't remember you guys I never having told, re- I never drywall told no, replaced. I, we did drywall replacements a couple of times and then Mitch... As he, you know, I wanted to make money selling software and he wanted to grow the the business as the maintenance and light yeah. industrial electrical stuff. So he he went into that and he, my former business partner ended up going into uh, hotel maintenance mm-hmm. and has done really well with it. Um, but I, I just didn't, yeah. I didn't like doing the work. Yeah. I didn't want to work And at that. I can honestly say that it's, re- so it's, it's rewarding. It's different. My brain for getting this house ready to sell has had to do this little kind of pivot of it's different. The work that I'm doing is different because it's not necessarily, this project is not being done for a client that's going to come in and live with it 
the like so it's not necessarily perfect in all like like no holidays like trust me i've had plenty of holidays this week yeah, i would be had, on a holiday they had uh, they had a different goal though the goal, the goal was is to turn the house quickly for the present. lowest possible cost with right. friends and family participating in staging painting cleaning light industrial work yard cleanup dump runs like we yeah. it was it was all hands on deck as a family and we're talking about a house that's going to go for it's going to go for a pretty good number regardless just because of the school district that it's in and the timing on it but um so yeah so the first um first business well let me go through at least like the first yeah sure go ahead little bit so as far as um the first time i ever made money where i took money from somebody that wasn't my parents or my family mm -hmm. is i mowed i mowed my neighbor's yard for seven dollars i think i've covered that um I, for five dollars when i was seven Sorry, seven years old. Mm -hmm. That was on Menhart. I used to live at one one zero three. So I'd like to know, as seven. a seven year old, did you negotiate the price before you got started? And were you like, "Hey, at Mrs. So and So, I'll do your lawn for five bucks," or was it like you, <sighs> you did it and then they they offered think, you five I bucks? I think I think she saw me mowing the yard on my side, and then I would go right up to the line, and she's like, "How much would it be for you to just keep going?" <laughs> And I think I said, I don't know, five bucks. Or what if I paid you five dollars? Would you do it? You're seven years old and you're mowing the lawn? <laughs> that just seems really young. Nessie's six. I was seven years old and I had a lawn care business. <laughs> <laughs> like, I would not. What's, business card? No, I didn't have business cards. I would but. not. Would you, would you be okay with, like, Nessie? Because she's young. I mean, I mean, you she's mean not young, but, like, would you be okay with Nessie being behind a is it an electric mower or is no, it like it a, a push, push mower? It was okay. a push mower. Okay, I'm just imagining her out there pulling the chain at like seven years old. I'm Besides, like, if I was high, if I was as high as my parents were, I'm sure I wouldn't have cared. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so clarifying, yeah. it's a push mower, which is... My dad kept Budweiser in business, <laughs> at least in Santa Clara County. It's a push mower and you're... Pushing the mower. Okay. Yeah. And you're seven. Like push okay. mower. That I can, I, get, I can wrap my brain around a little easier. Yeah. I than, think I was nine before I could use an edger. But yeah. Clearly, all I know is electric start mowers. My parents and did not believe in power mowers. tools. <laughs> so imagine edging the yard. You know, after my, well, and then my, when my mom ended up getting a house, she was like, oh, he knows how to mow a lawn. <laughs> Yo. You're eight. <laughs> Yeah, well, I was probably 10 no. by then, so I used to mow the lawn, but that was a push mower, front yard and backyard every week, and I had to wash their cars, and... I know what it, the, the, a non-electric uh, edger, yeah. it's that wheel, and it, just, it looks like a star. It's a cylinder, it, yeah. But that, yeah, 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 the, the edger. Yeah. Um, so I had the lawn care business for, you know, with one client, my next door neighbor, when I was seven, and then I started detailing cars pretty seriously when I was like 10 or 11. I was out hustling, knocking doors and getting car jobs to go detail. Man, and I would a, detail cars. What a different was, world. You know, and Bluey Bandit says, it was the 80s, mate. Like, like, like It was the 80s, mate. He's yeah. telling that story and the kids are like, you're not wearing a bike helmet? And he's like, it's the 80s, mate. It was mate. the 80s, mate. I, I, mean, I mean, I can't, I just have such a hard time thinking of sending Teddy out door to door asking people if they he can detail their car. <laughs> that just. Well, if you were as high as my parents were, <laughs> you wouldn't have cared either. It was, it's, it's like there, there was no, there was no TV. Yeah. I remember. TV makes people afraid. I was there. And you know, the biggest revelation I've had going through like all of these. If you've ever used aluminum foil on your bunny ears. Yeah. You might be when old the, one. Uh, when the P3 Orions are flying overhead, right? Like. Well, the biggest revelation that I had growing up from our generation this week, this month since we've been selling my grandparents' house and going through everything was if there was a dull moment, the dull moment was used either learning something new or creating something new. There was there was no dull moments, though. No, but I'm just saying, we, like, if we were bored, if I was bored, because I, unlike your situation, I had, my grandma was... Well, my grandma was at home, so I, I yeah, wasn't yeah, like I wasn't right. a latchkey. I wasn't alone, and so being home with my grandma, being home with somebody, yeah, and there's bored, mending, there's quilts, there's, there's just, laundry, there's no TV, there's, there's no internet, yeah. and and I would be like, Grandma, I'm bored, you know. So yeah. any moment that was not spent doing something else was for learning something new or creating something yeah. new, and so 
we feel like I'm going through and she saved everything. Of course, I'm going through all these like drawings and these little, you know, like we found pottery and stuff that sculptures that my uncles had made. So like imagine living in a time where every moment was not being spent yeah. scrolling or it, what being entertained. It was like, it's like the middle ages compared to right now. It really is it's a trip like 1982 or 1382. <laughs> it it's the like same. It. it was the same. Yeah. We had two channels. We had CBS and we had, we had a CBS affiliate on channel five. PBS. KPIX. We had PBS. We had PBS, but PBS didn't always come in. It was sometimes broadcast out of oh, San Francisco. Um, and then there was Channel KTVU. Two. Sit Ubu Sit. Yeah, Sit Ubu Sit. Ch- uh, KTVU. Uh, Channel 4, Cron, KRON, mm-hmm. Channel 4 got a little better. And then there was 7 and 11 were the two ABC yeah. affiliates. And depending on, you know, which the airplanes UHF. were flying, you could you could <laughs> fine-tune those and get them. But there was nothing on TV no, unless nothing. it was a football game on Sunday, golf on Saturday or Sunday, or maybe Seinfeld, like on a Thursday night, maybe a sitcom. TV was just not part of your life. Mm-mm. And there were no phones. The only Mm-mm. phone I had was plugged into the wall in my room. And I had eight tracks. Like my, I would escape you had through your music. Own phone. You, you had your own phone line in your room? What do you think I had? A you were rich. newspaper route and like. Uh, you were popular. I had, I had to have an uh, auto detailing business so that, I mean, I, I had to have a phone so I could answer phone calls for the auto detailing. Wow. Because I gave people my number and I'm like, just call me. And I had an answering machine with a little tape player. Aww. You know, <laughs> thanks for calling. You've reached voicemail for Jeff. Dude. Well, I mean, it fits our personalities. I mean, when, so in the moments of quote nothing. unquote boredom, I was building or learning or doing creative things. You were in money. business, you were making money. Yeah. And I, there's, I mean, that's, that's why. There wasn't anything else to do. Like, like, I'm just going to, I'm going to sit there and wear pants I don't like and shoes that don't fit or, and not eat. Or I could go figure out how to make money so that I can feed myself and get the little donuts at the junior high where we worked. And like making money for me was the difference between being able to eat on a regular basis. And not not to say my parents didn't feed us. Like we didn't miss a well, lot of just, meals. But you liked I other, wanted, you wanted to have your own type of food. I wanted to have money so I could go do stuff. I mean, if you want a bus ticket to go to the mall, you need yeah. money to play video games. If you want to get a stack of those Three dollars worth of uh, tokens at the at the video game oh, place. Yeah. It took money. McDonald's took money. Movies took money. Popcorn mm-hmm. took money. Dates for girls took money. If you wanted to do anything, you had to have cash so you could get out of the house and go do something because there was nothing to do. Well, and I think that another. So where you were going and doing all that, I was. I had that time spent with my family, and then yeah, um, and and but. Like that in much. that time frame, there was, and where we lived, there was so many kids that, um, yeah. w- had to be at daycare, like, like you were alone. So you, you know, you couldn't like, you, we had summertime where we could jump on our bike and go out with our friends and like be a pack and go play. But yeah. during the, you just had a job or you did more schoolwork or something like that. But so anyway, you know, to wrap up today, because it was our, it, it was a, it this was our 50th our, episode too, I think, I think it? Uh, uh, yep, Ooh. getting confirmed from Andrew. Getting Andrew, can, I would nod. love to hear from you. We've done this is our fiftieth episode. We're closing it out. I would love to hear a couple of words from from what your thoughts are. What have you learned in the last? We haven't quite gone a year yet, but we're getting really close to being at a one year mark, or maybe it is a year because there were a couple weeks that we skipped. So I think we're probably getting close. Do you remember when our first day was that we did our first? The seventeenth is the first one that I released. The seventeenth, it was released. Okay, so this will. It'll be our today's first the 13th. Year. We got through our first podcast. So we've done 50 episodes in 52 weeks. Andrew, I think this is a huge accomplishment, a huge shout out to Andrew for the production of it, for literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of shorts, which he's cut up and chopped and done voiceovers and sound and editing on. What What is your takeaway from the first year? That's a first, first yeah. year of doing the Jeff Heilman Project podcast here in our sound booth. No, yeah, I'm just trying to get a little bit of a name for myself and get as much work done as I possibly can in my young age so that when I get older, I'm able to relax a little bit. Good. Well, we're sure trying to give you the shout outs and make sure that you're a part of what we're doing. Um, We would not have this podcast produced regularly with the quality, with the lighting, with the just overall look and feel to it 
um, without our son doing the production who he's done it from the very beginning because Yay. I'm not going to be spending six hours or eight hours a week editing this. I just don't have the, the bandwidth to do that right now. But Andrew does have the bandwidth. He has the interest for it. And uh, I think we got off cheap by buying him a new computer so that he right? can do the work on this. We did that, I think, last year. And next, I think we're going to invest in some lighting so we can get a little bit more more lighting so on this. So happy part. anniversary, everybody. We made it to a Thank year. Thank you all for tuning in, sharing, subscribing, ringing the bells, smashing, whatever, and for being a part of the Jeff Heilman Project for this year. We salute you. We wouldn't be here without you, and we have lots more to come. So see you next week, we're everybody. We're in the content creation business now, folks, and... Thank you for, uh, for being an audience, for participating, for the comments that you've given us. It's been very encouraging. I had a friend of mine, Matt Bell, who was a guest on the show, and he said, um, you're going to have a love-hate relationship with your podcast. You're going to do it, and you're going to be really excited about it for the first 10 or 15 weeks, and then you're going to be really unexcited about it and not love it. And then if you keep going, you're going to love it again. And that well, <laughs> we've gotten to the point where I, we love it again and it's really fun. And you can always follow us on our platforms. Um, my, I am Jessica Builds on Instagram, Facebook, I and am everything Jeff else. Jeff Heilman uh, on Instagram. On Twitter, I'm JC Heilman on Twitter. And on LinkedIn, I'm, you can look up Jeff Heilman Oracle and I'll show up in those areas. Also, stay tuned for the um, newsletter. The Jeff, Heilman po the, the Jeff Heilman Project newsletter should be shipping this Saturday, my first ever newsletter with uh, pre and post call to action backups on those three platforms in addition to the YouTube and the audio versions. And we also got our first, just a shout out to Andrew, we got our first 5,000 view short on YouTube last week from one of the shorts that he did about us raising seven kids. So, Well, we certainly hope that you took a shot of something, maybe water, every time we said the word first in this episode. <laughs> Here's to you and to lots more years to come. God bless everybody. Thanks Have for a joining great us. rest of your week. See you soon, bye.